Okay, finally got that in the mail. I have the fittings here. New pump. Did I just, I hope I didn't just smash those fittings. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, just doing the thing. Got the new pump in the mail. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's in last week's video, it's a short story. Pump broke that goes in here, circulates the water. Circulating water is important for, well, there's plants in here for one. If that water's not circulating, then there's not enough oxygen in it, and then you get root rot on the plants that are in here, and uh, it just helps keep the temperature in the water more even, which helps with the humidity and everything. I th this is not the right pump. Oh, in this week's vlog, I'm trying to remember to tell everybody what's gonna happen in the vlogs when I start the vlogs. The problem with that is that I never have a plan. I pick up the camera and whatever I'm doing is what I'm doing. So the intro is, to, hi. Gonna mess with the pump. I have some aeroids to repot. Need to get this tank out of here. It's just taking up space at this point. I don't know if I'm gonna bore y'all with me scooping gunk out of the bottom of that and hauling it inside, but maybe, who knows? Sherwood's Forest, the nursery out here, they got in some hellebores. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I would like to pop out there one of these days because it's a beautiful week and maybe pick up some hellebores to pop into some containers outside. Just last night I was thinking about how much I just, I just want to get my hands down in the dirt and do something in the garden. And then boom, I wake up and they post, hey, look at all these hellebores. We have the ice and roses ones, which I really like. Maybe that'll happen. I don't know. For now, this is what I need to handle and uh, it's not the right pump. It's similar. Main difference here, one, size, pretty obvious, right? Not the same size, but you see the outlets there? The huge, huge difference. That's a big hole. Which reminds me, happy Valentine's Day. Hope everybody had a good Valentine's Day. So I'm hopeful that the right fittings are in here. There's something I can hopefully use to get this hose here attached to this. I need a whole different hose system over here because that hose is cracked, but for now, I would settle with just having a fitting that works. This would probably, that should be good. I bet I can make that work. Off to a great start. I have a tripod sitting right next to me. I don't understand why sometimes I just refuse to use the thing. I get bored without the camera actually in my hands when I'm actually holding the camera. Whoa, that's a big, girthy, thick fitting. When I actually have the camera here and I'm holding it, it's more like y'all are along the ride here with me doing this stuff. Should I, where does the gas, does the gasket go between this and, I think it goes inside the coupler. I have to think about this for a second. No, it doesn't fit inside the coupler, so that doesn't make sense. It also doesn't really fit in here either, but it's supposed to be tight. That's the whole point of a gasket. That, no, there's no way, that can't be right. This, no instructions. It's a pump, you wouldn't typically need instructions, but when you throw in little random pieces, it would be nice if there was at least a list of what the parts are and what they're for. Yeah, that's what you would think, right? Wouldn't you think that that goes in there? But no, if it does, it ain't right because this is not going together the way that it should. With a gasket in there, maybe I'm just not trying hard enough. That's a possibility. Okay, yeah, that works. Oh, nice twist tie. Pumpkin's gonna be happy about that. That cat, she loves a good twist tie. That'll keep her busy for like an hour. I should probably plug this in to make sure it even works before I get going with this. I'm curious to see the flow difference because this one says CTP 8,000 on the back and this one says 12,000. Assuming that's 12, yeah, 12,000 liters per hour. I don't, gallons. I don't know, 3170, more than enough. What was I thinking when I ordered this? I vaguely remember having multiple pumps in the shopping cart and uh, I maybe just grabbed the wrong one. I ordered it while I was also filming just because it's one of those things where I was like, oh, if I don't do this, I'm gonna forget about it. As long as the hose fits in there, it's fine. It's just, I'm not trying to create a geyser in here. The noise level might be a bit much. The other tricks I'm going to be getting this off there because I remember getting <laughs> this piece of hose onto that fitting was an absolute nightmare. I think I had to use a heat gun and I don't know where that is anymore. I think it broke and I had to get rid of it a couple years ago. Got it, I cheated and just cut the piece off. Figured that's better than nothing. And now the moment of truth. I should really probably clamp that on there, but I need to plug this in and see if the thing even works first. I know you'd think, hey, that's, shouldn't you do that before you put the stuff on? Yeah, probably. I should have done that. I think I even mentioned it and then the ADD stuff happened and whatnot. 
It's going to work. It's going to work. It'll come out. See that little black spot right there? That's where it's going to come out. I'm going to go plug this in. I won't be shocked if the pressure is high enough that it blows the hose right off the end of that fitting there. The only clamps I have right now aren't the reusable kind. Like they're the they're pinch ones that tend to break when you remove them. And I want to put a different hose on this hopefully sooner than later. So I'm being cheap and holding onto my clamp. Where can I plug this in? Hey. There we go. Not bad. That's a respectable amount of flow. I like that. Nice, sturdy, steady flow. It's not too loud. I Okay, I'm starting to remember what I think happened here. I remember thinking, hey, you know, if I'm getting a new pump, I should upgrade it because I was having issue getting quite enough pressure out of this one right here. It's, I don't think I needed to make that much of a leap, but here we are and it's fine. No, 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 I'm not done. I was supposed to put this on the crap. I completely forgot that I grabbed a leaf bag to put around the pump. Just keeps less junk from building up on the inside. I should probably, I bought it. I should use it, right? Easy enough to slide that around the pump. That's just gonna help keep junk from falling inside of there. This is clearly needs a larger pot. I just kind of toss it in there for the time being. Okay, that's done. It's a water flowing. I'm sure the plants that are in here are going to appreciate that. It's just one of those quick little things I need to get done. I had some other stuff I gotta do in the house. Eventually, we'd like to get those aeroids repotted. Just pulled that one off the counter, up there eating plants. It's the next day. Forecast has drastically changed, drastically. I think it's just supposed to be rainy most of the week. So won't be buying new plants to put outside. That's probably for the best. I know I just would end up going to the nursery, picking up some hellebores, which are what, 20 bucks a pop. Probably would have bought too many of them. And then in what, six weeks or so, I'm, I'm not even gonna care about those plants. So why bother? Waste of money. Probably still gonna do it next week or the week after when I wanna go outside and plant stuff. But just saying for right now, doesn't seem like something I should do. I and there are plenty of other things that need to be done. Got a bowl full of plugs here that need to be planted up. And uh, the, what is it, the McDowell. Do you need to repot the McDowell? Those set down over here. I did already pull my mix together last night because I anticipated I would probably be working on this in the vlog or what's left of my mix. I went ahead and I don't really know if saying watered it down is the right terminology. I just bulked it up with some more potting soil, which is going to be fine for everything I'm working with here. They're not going to mind that. I should probably pull these out, put a little bit of water in the bottom of this bowl for them yesterday and then drained it out and I added a little bit more this morning. I should have, the plugs came yesterday. I just, it was one of those days I didn't have time to get around to it and they're wrapped tightly. Because they're wrapped tightly and not in a spot with lots and lots of light. They don't have lots of drafts on them, all that, you know, nothing to stress them out, then they're okay. Since they weren't bare rooted, you don't have to panic and try and get them planted up right away or immediately. You need to give that sphagum some time to hydrate. I could just do this, even though I know it's gonna push some of the water out of the bowl. I don't really care. There we go. So I have, what, six plugs here. So I need to grab my plug pots. Nice little pots here that have domes on them I'm going to use for these, though I don't think that's really going to matter. The LKCs are too big, so that's not going to work for them. But they have these little domes that go on top of them. Really more for cuttings, but this will work too. So I haven't been taking all the cuttings. I had been hoping to be doing this season. I had mentioned that way back in the fall time that I wanted to do a good amount of propagating this year, but I just, you know, the spider mite thing that was going on or is going on, I'm trying to not do anything that's going to disturb the plants too much. I haven't had a chance to use these. Also, totally unnecessary. Completely, this, you don't need these. I, Amazon did the thing where they suggested it and they had the little lids on them and I said, okay, you got me. I ended up spending like $12 on some cups and normally I would just use any regular pot and just put a stick in the middle, throw a plastic bag over the top. The little lids were kind of cute, so I indulged. Totally unnecessary though. The mix here. Do I need to talk about this before? The base in here is cocoa core. There's a little bit of peat. There's a good amount of, it's the Orchiata New Zealand barks, the small chips. You can see me adding the sphagum right now. A good amount of perlite. I always use a tiny bit of fine grain sand as well. Earthworm castings, etc. I know etc. is not that helpful. The problem is I don't tend to ration it out. I start with my base, which is the cocoa core and the peat. And then I add the other bits to it as I see needed until it has a texture where it's going to fall apart. That's what, I just add the sagamoss to it. 
but where it's gonna be something that's nice, loose, and airy. And when I'm mixing things up in larger batches, which is what this was right here, I tend to go ahead and err on the side of it being more what looks like a potting soil, and then I can add to it by what plants I need to repot. If I'm potting something up that needs a lot of airflow around those roots, like an anthurium, like the Warokianum, then I could just take some of this, put it in a bowl, add more wood chips to it, some pumice, and help get it more fluffed up. It's a lot easier to add to the mix than take away. That's also why I pretty much never pre-mix sphagnum into these blends because I don't always know if I'm going to want it with the plants that I'm working with. Sometimes it can retain too much moisture. I have found that having some of the sphagnum moss in the mixes though, there's something about perhaps it's the surface area of moss, of the dried moss. They get better root growth. That and the cocoa core. Cocoa core over the peat, better root growth. And I think that that has something to do with just how mycorrhiza fungi can adapt to it or however it's being utilized, having something to decay with. I have read a good amount of stuff online about how cocoa core is really great for mycorrhiza. That's a fungus that you want growing around the roots of the plants and uh, mycelium growth in general. It's something about it. I don't know what it is. I'm sure I could read deeper into it and figure it out, but I don't really care. There are always downsides with that too, right? So potentially there would be too much moisture retention and then not going to have some very happy plants if there's too much moss. Forgot to bring a rag out. Now I, I can only use the camera with my left hand. That, that was a bad idea. Where's my rag? I need a, something to wipe my hand off with. Shit. Paper towel will have to do. I usually keep a damp rag nearby when I'm doing this so that I can get the dirt out from under my nails because that grosses some people out. Don't know why. Playing with plants here should be obvious that that's why there's dirt. You know it's not something disgusting. It's just potting soil, but it's is what it is. I've got some cool plants here. Have I just been rambling and y'all been just wanting to know what the plants are? Probably, that sounds about right. That's what I would do here. So uh, to start with, I have two of these Alocasia golden dragons. They're little, so it's hard to really show off what they look like, but you can see the stem. They have really cool stems on them. The golden dragon, they look kind of like a Ludia when they get larger. Yellow veining on the inside of the foliage and a, a similar growth habit as well to the Ludia. Kind of like a Cerion and a Ludia put together. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if these actually were just Cerions and Ludias mixed together. But I like to make sure there's some moisture around inside the plugs because when they're wrapped like that, just give them a little tickle. Not much. I'm not going to break the root mass up, especially on an Alocasia. They're big babies about having their roots messed with, but as long as you get some of that just lightly loosened up, that's all they need. Loosen up the rest of the way on their own. The sphagnum moss for the alocasias, that's kind of maybe not always the best idea. I tried to pick up some pieces here where there wasn't much of that mixed in. It can retain moisture for a really long time. And during the winter, I have much better luck keeping the alocasias more on the dry side. I had really figured that I was going to have to be uh, watering them a lot more this winter than I normally have in other years past because of the higher temperatures and humidity but I really haven't. They're still prone to root rot, so that's why I went ahead and I was like, you know, I'm just going to use the aeroid mix for them to get them going, get some nice root growth out of them. If it ends up being too much airflow, it's drying out too quickly, I can always just throw a wicking cord into the bottom of these and turn them into little self-watering containers. Or also, like I said, it's easier to add than subtract with the blends here. I can add some compost sprinkle it on top and water it in. That'll help a good bit with water retention. Roots on this one look really good too. The golden dragon is not one of the, like the jewel types that stays really small. These get to be a decent size. Once I've seen a good amount of root growth out of these, another reason that I'm kind of digging the queer pots to get these started with. Once I'm able to see that root growth in there, like up against the sides, I can go ahead, bump these up into a larger container. And then this nice loose mix, a lot of it will just fall right out. I don't want to worry about the soil being backed up and clogging up anything like that. With, with the plugs, sometimes, depending on what it is, if that were a moss plug, which is normally something you always see on orchids, I would have tried to work a lot of that out because it can form a ball that the plant over the years, when it grows around it, it ends up rotting. But this mix, it'll fall right off. I say that because these will more than likely during the late spring into summer when they get moved outside, they're either going to go in the ground if they're large enough, or I will probably just directly move them up to an eight to 10 inch container. Which I know it sounds drastic, but when they're outside, they can handle it and they'll fill those out and be good to go in the landscape 
hopefully by midsummer, if not, then I'll hold on to them and do that next year. They're not cold hardy, so it's not like there's something that I'd be adding to the garden to have around all the time. So even if they did end up in the landscape, I'd be lifting them and bringing them inside for the winter anyways. Okay, now these. I'm excited about these. And they, I guess there's not much to look at with it just yet, so that's just the camera doesn't want to focus. Can you guess what it is? Probably not. It doesn't resemble pretty much in any way, shape, or form what it's going to look like when it gets bigger. These are philodendron pink birkin. They look very similar to just a regular birkin, but they have pink on the newer growths when they come out. Kind of cool, something a little bit different. The Birkins, they've been around for quite a while. A pretty simple and easy to grow philodendron. I would imagine these will probably triple in size by the end of the year, if not even bigger. They're normally very quick to get going once they've gotten their roots out and started to fill in a pot. I've talked about the regular Birkin in other videos. I had one for a while just because there's so much hype around it. I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot and see if I like it. And while it is a cool looking philodendron, it's I, the foliage is really neat on it. They remind me so much of a canna <laughs> of the Pretoria. For those other ones, I have some from Plant Delights. I can't remember what they're called. So I have one, it's called like Bengal Tiger. The foliage on them is very, very, very similar. And that's not a bad thing. I like the foliage on those cannas, but with the cannas, I can keep outside, throw some mulch on them. It's a lot easier to have them in the ground and I still get to have that neat leaf to look at for a good part of the year. Whereas with the philodendron, I'm like, okay, well, you're just taking up space inside that I can maybe use for something else. I'm not crazy about it. And it looks so much like something I can grow outside that's not taking up space inside on the grow shelves underneath the grow lights. That's why I'd gotten rid of my Birkin because I was just like, I'm not that into it. But I've been seeing the pink Birkins around and I thought, you know, that might be worth giving a shot. I really do like the pink stripage that those get on them. It's just something different and neat to look at. Okay, these right here, I could use the Aeroid mix on these Peperomias. I feel like that would be a waste of the Aeroid mix. When I could just, it's a Peperomia. They can go into anything that drains well and isn't going to be sopping wet. I'll probably just use some of my left over uh, the miracle Grow cactus and palm citrus mix that I bought mostly so I could rag on it on a video and then I opened it up and I was like actually I don't hate this. I think that's probably the way to go for the peperomias. I don't want to waste any of the aeroid mix on these and they really don't need it. They're such tough sturdy little plants. Using a regular succulent mix should be totally fine for them. I will have edited a lot of it out but you may notice that the last I don't know, several minutes of this video have been very choppy. I'm having a lot of trouble talking to the camera today. I don't know if that's because I gave up caffeine like a few days ago, but I haven't felt affected by it. I feel great, actually. I didn't have like any headaches, nothing like that. Sleeping better and everything, but that's the only thing I can figure is like, why am I having trouble putting sentences together? I guess really don't need to act like that's something new. I feel like on almost every single vlog, I get tongue tied at some point. That happens when you're sitting around talking essentially to yourself like a crazy person. Something I didn't mention when I was working with these plugs is I have been making sure, it's hard to show it on camera, but I've been making sure that the top of the plug is just a smidge, just a tiny bit above the surface of the soil. I don't pull them up that high because when I water these in, the soil level is going to go down as it is. I don't make sure they're sticking up drastically high because once I water these in, the soil level is going to drop. That's just something I've always done with plugs. They're small, delicate, and sensitive. They're not used to having a lack of airflow down there in the crowns, which you wouldn't want with any of these plants, period. You want to make sure that there's a good amount of airflow in there. As long as all the rootage is down there, it's fine. With larger plants, if part of the roots are sticking up, that's normally okay too. Plants will adapt. They'll normally just go ahead and send out some new roots down below and be totally fine, depending on the plant. There are variables to factor in. Okay, so here's, you see the thing with the domes? So if these were fresh props, then I would be more concerned about this, but you can take these little domes and stick them on top there to help hold the moisture in. I'll add the domes after I water them in, but I'm not gonna keep them on there for very long. Because for one, these are already pretty big and it's just gonna be a temporary thing just to help them adjust to having been shipped and what not, want to make sure that the plants can take in all of the moisture necessary. I forgot, I didn't tell you what these were, did I? No, I definitely didn't. These are Peperomia pink ladies. It's a variegated Peperomia. None of the plants, including those philodendrons back there, they aren't showing much of their variegation yet, but you can see it's a nice white speckly variegation. And the newer growth has some pink in there. Sometimes they'll hold on to some of that pink and the older foliage. 
there's a lot of variability with this one from plant to plant to plant. Sometimes they look mind blowing and sometimes they just look like a peperomia that has a few variegated leaves. They're just simple and colorful. That's what I liked about them. I love peperomias. They're it's such resilient plants. I mean, this one in the back, you can kind of see those nubs coming up from that pot back there right here. That one got left in my car and we had a freeze that was 16 degrees. I had bought a bunch of stuff from Lowe's and I forgot it was in there. It was a major oopsie, not proud of it. But I warmed the plant up and it's coming back. They're really sturdy troopers and they're not something I have to worry about around the pets either. I don't worry about most of the plants around the pets, even the ones that are toxic. The cats seem to know which ones to leave alone. They're colorful and sturdy. I love the foliage on them. They tend to have some really nice vigor with their growth. They don't attract lots and lots of pests for the most part. And there's that fun, glossy, almost sparkly sheen on the leaves as well. That's something I love. That's one of my favorite things about African violets is when you look closely in the right light, there's like a sparkle on the flowers with those, on their flowers specifically, like the crystallinum and theriums and lots of, well, there are a lot of plants that just have a neat sheen to them under the right light. The pink ladies, I don't know. I think putting a dome on these is going to be kind of push. Yeah. I could have planted them down further into the pot, but then there wouldn't have been much soil underneath that plug. The humidity out here is pretty good. And since these are rooted, they're not fresh cuttings by any means at all. I don't think it's necessary to put the domes on them. Is that the peperomias, I might just because I have noticed with peperomias, even though they can be pretty well adapted to just growing in the house without a lot of humidity, Anytime I stick one of these things in a terrarium, that's when they just explode in growth. This will help hold in moisture while they get adapted. So that's, oh, I was gonna wait till I watered them. It's fine. At least that way you can see what they look like with their little domes on top of them. The domes are vented. They have holes up here. It'd be easy to cover them up if for some reason you wanted to. I don't see why I would wanna do that, but if I have any other cuttings that end up moving out here, if that spider mite situation gets worked out, then that's something I'll consider doing. The pink Birkins, I'm actually really excited about these. The new leaves opening up in that really vibrant pink, and then they tend to hold on to some of that pink on the undersides of the foliage. Just looks really cool. It's a neat contrast. It's been a while since I've had plants where I'm really excited about them. Other than like, you know, I was excited about the queen and the Vichii and Thuriums, but otherwise, most of the plants, I'm like, yeah, it's been around, I've seen it, but I haven't had many house plants that have such intense variegation with that type of color, other than like a croton, which, you know, been there, done that, love the crotons. You know, after a while, they turn into old news. I did look it up, the Golden Dragon is a hybrid of the Ludia and the Serion, which explains why they're so freaking awesome. They end up having really long, elongated leaves that have lots of ripples in them. It's just really cool looking foliage on those. I cannot wait for those to put some size on over time. Everything here is from the Green Escape on Etsy. That's why there's two of everything because you're required to order things in quantities of two. Not my favorite thing about that website because it makes placing orders kind of pricey, but I can understand it from the perspective of not wanting to waste the resources and time shipping something if it's just gonna be one little plug. It's like, go ahead and order two. Maybe something's gonna happen to one of them. They've been a reliable source for ordering plants during the winter because they have like a winter package where they include a heat pack and they put everything nicely folded into an insulated envelope. These arrived actually pretty warm. They were nice and toasty. So uh, they did a good job with that shipping. I'm going to go ahead, put these over on the shelves and then uh, repot the McDowell. Okay, never mind. Don't hate me. Change of plans. So the McDowell, philodendron, the Dean McDowell, I want to keep that one in the house at some point and I really want to pot it up into a container that I absolutely love and I was going to put it here into this bubble pot which is one of my favorite pots I wish that they would still sell these I haven't seen them for sale in years I love the bubble containers it's a little well, you see it but they've got the bubbles on them I have a different plant that I've had my heart set on to put into this container and I'm looking around out here and I don't have anything that I think would fit the McDowell. So uh, I'm gonna actually have to go to a nursery next week and see if I can find a container that I would like in the house for that philodendron. But there's still a plant that needs to be repotted. Look at this sad little crystallinum, poor thing. Okay, so here's what happened. Poor little crystallinum got some frost on it last fall when we had that freeze that snuck in unexpectedly and it almost killed it back completely and what you see here is what I've managed to get to push out of there since. 
the mix that it's in is drying too fast for me. I want to repot this into something that holds on to moisture for a little bit longer because I have had a lot of trouble keeping this one hydrated. The crystal items, they definitely do need a very airy, chunky mix, but I was having to water this thing like three or four times a week, which I just don't have time for. I haven't seen any root rot. The roots are still firm on here, not quite what I would prefer to see, but it's something. When I get into a situation like this, I basically view it as planting a prop. There aren't many roots on there that are viable anyways, since it's not fully wet because the mix just dry, is drying out too fast for me. I'm not going to jump to conclusions and say that they're rotten since they're still nice and firm. Some of them I could probably cut out of there. So I think what I'm going to do is go for a middle ground here and put it into a container that has holes in it for airflow, but use a mix that will hold on to moisture longer. I may end up just breaking even here by doing that. And it may just, could end up just being the same situation as far as not being able to keep the plant hydrated. I'm not sure. But one of the nice things about the size of these pots here, this is just a six inch slotted pot. If it turns out there's too much airflow in there, I did this with some of my other anthuriums, my uh, Splendid and my Vici is in one of these. If I'm having trouble keeping them hydrated, it's really easy to find a catch pot to just slide it into. That ends up cutting back on all that airflow that's making them dry out so quickly. I do think I want a little bit more of the saga moss in here. So the person who's Sean, when he all sent that plant to me and I have loved it, it's actually been really sturdy so far but the it's just not humid enough here, I think, for a mix that's quite that chunky. So I keep my plants outside during the summertime, and that's when I was really noticing that I was having to water it a ton. And it's humid here, but it's not as humid as down deep south. During the summertime, like, the humidity ranges from 70 to, I mean, 99%. 100%. Last summer was abnormally dry outside and that could have just been what threw things off. Maybe it was just a fluke. I don't know. That was my first year gardening with dry air. I gotta say, really was not a fan. I'm going to try and make sure that that bit of the cutting, this long part, is down in contact with that soil so I get that new growth to come up from that direction. Pull that to the side and fill in down below right here. It's like a little soil cushion for that to lay on. It's not at a drastic angle, just slightly. The more contact that has with the potting mix, the more roots it's likely to put out, the more growth it will potentially put up. I can straighten it back out now that I got the soil underneath those roots there. Definitely don't want to go too deep either because that will also potentially kill it. I also have to account for the fact I'm going to be watering this in and some of that mix is going to flush out. There we go. I think that should be good. But I'm not sure with something that I'm treating as a cutting. Sometimes I'm not going to do that with this one. I don't think it needs it. I'll take a ball of damp sphagnum moss and stuff it just underneath where there's an air gap on the what was the old growing point there to help support it and make sure there's constant moisture there for them to root out into. Then as those roots have come out, I can pluck that out when they get down into the soil or even cover up a portion of it. I did that with a Gloriosum that I did a big prop on last year. They just basically laid it on top of the medium and put some moss on top of it in the spots where the runner just didn't want to make contact with the soil because it's a really wonky shape. Like I said, with this, don't think I'm going to need to do that. Add just a little bit more for good luck. I need to add more after I water it in. That'll be easy to do. That should be a nice happy medium there where there's still a nice chunky mix, a good amount of airflow in it. I made sure to not tap it down very much with my fingers. I was just trying to work it in between the roots. It's still a blend that's slightly more dense than I would prefer to use with the crystalline, but again, because of the holes, I'm thinking that that will help make up for it. And if it still turns out that it's drying out way too fast, I can put a stick in here and a plastic bag over the top, help hold in some moisture just until it gets going. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea anyways. I might do that, but I'm gonna wait and see how well this holds on to moisture first. Because I don't think it would be a great idea to take the plant from one extreme to another, because that could just create issues with shock. Doing this for now should be good enough, and I can just sit back and see what else it needs and go from there. Get that set down over here inside the shelves, we'll get more appropriate lighting. What I did with my watering can, give this one a nice big 
drink. Nice, sharp drainage. Water's moving right through it. That's what I wanted to see. I was on the fence because this is a mix that I would use more for philodendrons than an anthurium. In thurum, in thurium, thinking that this will be better just for the way I grow plants and how I work with things in my grow space and outside. Easy to correct. If it's not enough airflow, just pull it out again and add larger chunks of bark in there. Right now, I just start with the small and I add the bigger chunks for plants that I think would need it, like the, like the queen. You know, they need a good amount of airflow. It's looking great, isn't it? It's opening up a new leaf though, so I guess it's happy. VCI has a new leaf, the Splendid Hybrids dropping some leaves because accident, that was my fault, I let it dry out. One of those days not long ago when the temperatures were really cold outside and I just forgot when the heater's running double time that I have to water double time too because the heater dries the air out. Even with that big humidifier, it does still really, impact the humidity out here. Yes, there it is. Well, that's a fun new plants, a new container for that crystal item, hopefully a brighter future for it. That's going to do it for now. Spider mite situation, I'm still kind of like, ugh. I'm seeing there's some webbing up there on the freckles, who's always been the most sturdy pest-free plant ever. But freckles was really hard to get the predator mites onto also because I had cut it back so it was just a bunch of sticks. So I'm gonna need to open the ladder up and get up there and clean out that webbing. And I was planning on having more predator mites show up in the mail in a couple weeks. I'm just gonna go ahead and have them show up next week. I and mean, what the heck, who cares? It's another 25,000, no big deal. And I keep on keeping on top of it. Happy about the new pump. I already watered with this one time and it was so much faster. The old one, the water, the pressure just wasn't reaching some of the other plants when I would take this all the way out. Made a huge difference. Oh yeah, there's a new leaf on the Monstera. It's not much to look at yet. When it opens up the rest of the way, I'll show it to everybody. And I'll be on the lookout for a pot that I really want to use for the Dean McDowell. This one down here that's covered in spider mite powder, the predator mite powder stuff. That one, one of my favorites. One of my absolute favorites. That's why I want to make sure it goes into a container that I really, really like. Okay, that's, comment down below, say hi. How's everybody doing? Hope your weekend's going well. That's on the pink Birkins. I'm pretty excited about them. I think they're cool. The Peperomias, I just like them because they're Peperomias and especially the golden dragon alocasias. I didn't tell the story. So I had ordered a golden dragon alocasia to come mail order from, I think it was called Planta Queen on Etsy. It was a pricey plant. It was like 90 bucks. It was back in November, late October, probably late October. So I placed my orders thinking that I'd have more time for them to come in before things got cold and then it got cold sooner than I expected. It's nice, big, beautiful looking plant and it just, Never showed up. They did that thing where like a day or so after I placed the order, they labeled it as shipped or packed and ready to be shipped. One of those things. And then it never shipped. I complained they ended up refunding me. I wasn't super happy about it. I would have preferred to have gotten the one that's in the 10 inch container. Cause it already would have been a nice, big, beautiful plant and probably would have been looking pretty good by now, but it'll do too. It can be fun growing up the plants that are fast growers, especially from little starts and watch them do their thing, get nice and big. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna go. Okay, all right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye.